99% of the photos that I make are absolute garbage. I'm talking, I go out with my camera, make the pictures, and 99 out of 100 photos could just be thrown in the trash the minute I get home. And this concept applies to any of your favorite photographers, whether it's someone online, someone you follow on Instagram, someone you bought a book from, they are all the exact same. And it's important for you to understand this. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a real life example of how this concept applies to my own photography. And the reason I'm making this video is because I wanna encourage encourage creators out there to understand that photography is hard. You are not gonna get great images every time. And I heard a famous photographer once say that if you create six good images in a year, it's considered a good year. So today's video is just a little bit of encouragement and it's also photography behind the scenes for all the people out there who've been asking me to create another one of these. I got y'all, but you gotta do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button on today's video. Let's get this to 1500 thumbs up today, the first day the video's out. And if it does, I will continue to make these photography behind the scenes videos that y'all keep requesting from me. So. In today's photography behind the scenes, what we're doing is we are taking my Leica SL2 out with a 24 millimeter 1.4 lens and we are doing some night photography. Now my favorite part of winter is the fact that it gets dark so early. Night photography can be a little bit difficult in the summer because obviously it gets dark at like nine o'clock and who wants to be out from nine till midnight making photography? I know I don't. It's a lot easier to get out at 5.30 when it gets dark way earlier. So that's one of the benefits of winter and because winter just started, I thought it'd be a great occasion to go out and do some night photography and share this lesson with y'all. So sit back, enjoy today's video. I'm gonna go through a one hour photo shoot that I did in a small town and break down every image that I made. I'm gonna show you all the bad photos and we're gonna talk about the one good image I made on this photo outing. Pause real quick before we do that. Let me mention the sponsor on today's video is Squarespace. We'll talk about them later. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Evan Ramp. I'm the founder of ModernCreativeMoney.com. And this YouTube channel is for any photographer out there looking to explore ideas, make money with their camera and live a better creative life. So if that sounds like you, hit the subscribe button down below. So now that we got that out of the way, let's for real jump into this photography behind the scenes. So you all know how it goes. Usually the first shot is a quick little warm up. So there's some people down the way in this like sidewalk trying to get them crossing through. They don't really stand out as a subject, but the lights do look pretty cool with that ProMist filter. So I make my way down the street. This is a pretty active like area town square thing. So I figured there'd be a lot of good opportunities to capture people interacting with scenes. We have this person walking on the right side of the frame and I make the photo from the hip because I didn't want to draw attention to myself. That photo looked terrible. I messed up the composition because I wasn't looking through the camera. Now this shot is cool because there's a lot of contrast between the lights in the center of the frame. That test photo or first one didn't look good. So I move out into the middle of the street, wait for some people to cross. And this image right here, it's so-so, it's not the greatest thing I've ever made, but it definitely captures the idea that I had in my head of these hellacious lights with the shadows on the top and the bottom of the frame. I don't know if I'm gonna write home about that photo, but off to a good start. I feel like I'm getting on the right track now. I turned this corner to this really dark alley and I knew this was here and I was hoping that someone would cross in front of this frame, but as you can see, it's just way too dark. There's not enough happening. So I moved down the alley a little bit and wait for someone to cross right here. And once again, this one's just not working out either. Just the composition is bad. It's too dark. Doing this handheld doesn't work. So I go up a little ways and I notice these cool windows and then this neon sign. And I thought it was a really cool like juxtaposition of this window with the fluorescent lights and the colors of those signs over there. But I had to sit around and wait for a long time for someone to move through this scene. And I captured this image right here, which is pretty strong. I can rework the edit a little bit, but I like the interaction of the scene with the subject. There's a lot going on there. And I really like this neon sign, so I wanted to try to capture some type of image utilizing it. We have a person walk through this frame right here. These are just pretty boring. They're kind of snapshotty. The composition is weak because it's straight on. I don't know if I would, I wouldn't do anything with these. It's like a throwaway photo. It's not the worst, not the best. And we still have this sidewalk and these signs with someone else walking down. I decided to take this photo right here and this one just stinks. It's horrible. That's why there's no edit on it. Um, but on the left side, 
up here, you're going to notice some people walking down the, oh, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. I do make a quick little photo of this neon sign right here, which how can you not? With the Promus filter, it looks pretty cool. Reminds me of the Kings of Leon Mechanical Bull album cover. But right here, what I was talking about, we have some people walking on the left side of the frame. So I wait for them to be silhouetted, silhouetted against that white wall right there. And this shot's decent. It's more, it's a better composition, but it's not anything that I'm gonna write home about either. It's pretty weak in my opinion. Now, as I walk down this street, I see this person way up ahead with a cowboy hat on. And y'all know I'm a sucker for any type of street photography that incorporates a cowboy hat. The problem, this is not like New York or something. It's a very small town square. So I gotta be strategic with how I get these photos. This shot is not good. Um, the subject's actually blurry. I don't know if you can tell on the screen. So I wait around, try to rethink that composition. And I notice these people crossing through this street right here. This shot stinks, but I know I'm onto something something with it so you'll see I come back to it. Try one more photo of the cowboy hat. I try to do like a low aperture f1.4 shot with some bokeh in the background. This one's not doing it for me either. It's just it's cool. I think there was something there but it's an example of me just not being able to figure out what I can do. But back to that shot that I was just talking about that I thought had potential. I noticed someone else walking through this frame right here. So I set myself up actually get in position and get behind this tree to add a little bit of foreground. And I make this photo of this person walking through this frame and they're silhouetted against that window. And that photo is very strong. That's definitely the best one on the day compositionally and storytelling -y with the like vibe of this town square. Did I just say storytelling E? That's a weird word, but I'm a sucker for red old cars right here, and I like these lights make this image. Don't know what I would do with it, but it has a cool vibe, cool colors. Um, I don't think that one's necessarily bad, but once again, it's nothing great. Maybe in a set of images, it would stand out. Now right here, try one more attempt at this neon sign trash this photo stinks it's just a boring basic weak composition so after that i decided to leave this town square and move to this really cool bridge that i saw as i was driving in to this location now i wasn't really sure how to utilize this bridge so i first make this image right here of the blue bridge with the orange lights behind it and the moon i think this one's pretty cool and would pair really nicely with a portrait or some other photo from this location like i said when you're capturing images Images like this, photo sets and context help out a lot. This one is just me messing around. I like the blue and the orange, but that shot is pretty weak. And to close out this shoot, I set the camera up on top of this like pole right here and use an interval timer and try to capture some images of myself. Now I managed to capture some people crossing this bridge as well, but I think I dramatically underutilized this location and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to fix it in a second. First, I wanna thank the sponsor on today's video, Squarespace. If you're a photographer looking to expand your photography career, a website is one of the easiest ways to do that and no one makes it easier than Squarespace. There are three primary functions that I use my Squarespace website, evanramp.com for. One is to showcase my work. I have a portfolio portfolio tab on my website where I show a variety of different things that I've made. One is my product photography, some travel photography, things I've done with clients, but Squarespace makes it so easy to add one of these portfolios to your website. I have a video that I linked in the description down below breaking that down, but all you got to do is add a page, add a portfolio title to it, and then add a post with whatever it is you want to share. Squarespace also allows you to showcase a blog, which means you can share old work that maybe might be hard for people to find on social media and have it be prevalent on your website. And you can also share information. And lastly, Squarespace allows you to sell your photography work and get paid for the things that you create in the ways of photo books, merchandise, prints, it doesn't matter. Squarespace e-commerce tools allow you to drag and drop whatever it is you need into a template that's already built for you. And I have videos breaking that down on the site as well. You can go to squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial, follow along with one of those videos, and use code evanramp when you sign up to save 10%. That's squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial, follow one of those tutorials, and take advantage of everything Squarespace has to offer. And then when you're ready to sign up, use code EvanRamp to save 10%. So a few interesting things happened on this photo outing. One, as you can see, a lot of bad photos were made. Most of the photos on this day are ones that I'm going to be able to do absolutely nothing with. But I did get one photo that I'm really happy with. I mentioned it in the video. It's this one right here. Now, 
Now, if I wanna take this edit to the next level, the next things that I would probably do is jump into Photoshop. I would do a color balance adjustment on this, and then I would go into an app like Retouch or use Photoshop to clean up the image and take off any blemishes. And now this is a photo that can make its way to my social media and potentially a book or a body of work or a photo set or something like this. But every other photo that I made today, it's just in the trash. I'm not gonna actually throw those files out. I keep them stored on my computer, but basically they're useless. They're nothing that I'm going to use. Who knows, one day maybe I'll come back to one or two of them and use them for something, but mostly they're just photos that led me creatively to the one good image that I liked. And that's the lesson that I wanna get across in today's video. Remember, when you go out to create photos, it's all about the process. You know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Sometimes you might make an hour of bad photography to get the creative ideas going to find that one photo that finally clicks and everything comes together and you have an image that you're happy with. And another great benefit to just getting out and creating and making all these bad photos is you can allow yourself to come up with ideas after the fact. When I went to this location and we found that really cool bridge with all those lights, I didn't really know what to do with this location on this particular night. I tried a few things, it didn't really work out, but now I have some ideas that I'm cultivating in my head that I can use next time I go out to this location to create something that is good. So the benefits of a day of photography like this, even though 99% of the photos were bad is one, I did get something good, and two, I got the creative juices flowing for future shoots and future things that I can create, and that is what this is all about.